This is the third episode of my Kyrgyzstan travel vlog and last time we went to Kegeti Gorge, Kanorchek Canyon. And this time we will be exploring a lot more. So let's go. Yes. Yay! Did the first one actually hit the board? <laughs> If you have not seen my Kyrgyzstan travel guide, I would definitely recommend you check that before continuing with this video because there's tons of information there that's really, really important and you should know that before you actually start planning your visit to this country. So check that out and let me continue with the video. Welcome to Isakol Lake and Karakol. So if you're in Kyrgyzstan, you have to visit this lake. It's the biggest lake in the country and there's so much that happens around it. I'm sitting in Karakol at the moment, which is the biggest city around this lake, but I divided my stay in two. In the first part of this day, I'm staying in Karakol. Karakol is located about 20 minutes drive from the lake, so it's not at the shore. So I wanted to spend some time there. Today is the day we explore things to do in and around Karakol. I am in a bazaar in Karakol and this is the best way to explore the local social life. It's not just a place where people buy and sell things. There's a huge social element to it. People come here with their families to eat, to explore, to shop, everything. And you will find everything here from shoes to a lot of dried fruits, spices, herbs, everything. I mean everything. Even meat, fruits, vegetables. I'm gonna go around, show you a little bit of this gorgeous bazaar. By the way, this one is Ikhtalak and there's another one called Bugu Bazaar, which you can also explore. The fun thing that I found is there are little alleys of everything. So there's an alley that would only sell dry fruits. There's an alley for meat, alley for dairy products. So it's quite interesting and you get to see so many things. But there's a really fun surprise in there. So let's go explore. I'll give you a little bit of the tour and then we end up in the surprise. So I discovered something interesting. This is a Kyrgyz version of lingerie. So this is what the new brides wear at home. Sort of, you know, right after the marriage to keep things spicy. <laughs> but it's quite interesting. I like, you know, how different this is. I would think, you know, this is perfectly okay to wear outside, especially those, but yeah. Kyrgyz lingerie for all you people. These are Kyrgyz caps. So this is the Kyrgyz traditional cap. I had to try it on. This is the special surprise, an entire alley just for Ashle Amfu. If you want to know more, check out my Food in Kyrgyzstan video. I am at Isakol Lake, about 20 minutes drive from Karakol and I'm going kayaking. So it is roughly about 20 minutes drive to get here and you can do this either in a group or on your own with a guide like I'm doing. It's a great way to explore this beautiful lake. By the way, Karakol is called the adventure capital of Kyrgyzstan and you can do so many things there. I wanted to do paragliding as well, but unfortunately it's not available this year. So let's go do some kayaking and then We'll see what else we can do. There's a lot, by the way. Although Isikul Lake can be quite windy at times, but mostly it is really nice and relaxing to do kayaking here. And you can also see the entire set of mountains that cover the lake.
This is the Dungan Mosque built by the Dungan Muslims who fled from China in the late 19th century and then built this in the early 20th century. Now it's really interesting because this is really colorful and it is built in the Chinese sort of Buddhist style because they wanted a remembrance of their their actual home which is China. So all the colors you see on the mosque are the colors of China. All the fruits you see are the fruits of China. And the most interesting thing is that this mosque was built without a single nail. So this entire structure you see, no nails involved and it's a wooden mosque. Really beautiful, really interesting and it's an easy, easy walk from the city center if you are staying in Karakol like me. So this is the other attraction in Karakol after the Dungan Mosque and this one's equally beautiful. This is a Russian Orthodox church and as you can see it's also made with wood. Now they say there's no nails involved either but I somehow doubt it but I'll take their word for it. But it's really really beautiful. I really like how they decorate the places of worship here with so many flowers and the entire place looks really beautiful. Let's go see the church. While it is not the grandest or the most beautiful buildings, if you are a history buff, this is a good place to see because this is literally the first mosque in this area. The journey to Altin Arashan Valley starts with this Jeep and there's a story behind this. But I'll tell you that on the way because it's really loud here. Let's go. Another beautiful day with a journey to my favorite place in Kyrgyzstan. I am on the way to Altin Arashan, which means Golden Springs, and it is one of the most beautiful valleys in Kyrgyzstan. So this is the same road that will lead you to Alakul Lake, which is again one of the most beautiful lakes in the country. I will explain in a minute how you can do both these things. I was supposed to do the hiking all the way, but unfortunately I've got a sore throat and I'm on antibiotics. so. I still didn't want to miss this beautiful place. I mean, we're just halfway through. We're just stopping for a quick break and it's already really, really gorgeous. I definitely recommend not to miss this no matter what. Like, I'm sick, but I'm still going. Some practical information if you want to do this. To go to Alako Lake, it takes about three days on foot. And the first part is to go to Altin Arashan, which is around 14 kilometers. And it usually takes about half a day. If you go by walking and then you have to go up, there's somewhere you will have to camp on the way. And then you will be going to, the hardest part of the hike is the last one, where you go all the way up to Alako Lake. You will be camping there the second night and the third day you will be basically coming back. You can do this with some help. One, you can hire a jeep that will take you all the way to Altin Arashan. It usually takes around two to two and a half to three hours. From there you can hire a horse which will take you up around four hours and then the last one hour you can just go. That's the best way if you want to do it in one day. So I'm just gonna go to Altin Arashan and then come back by jeep. So let's continue our journey. Let's go. Just because you're coming on a jeep does not mean it's gonna be a smooth ride. It's really bumpy. So we arrived at this youth camp behind me and we're gonna do a little bit of a hike and then we'll continue on um, and head back actually. But there's something really interesting here that I didn't know before starting. So I'll explore that as well. I'll keep it a little bit of a surprise for you guys until then. 
totally had to stop the hike because I met a new friend. So cute! Welcome to Kyrgyzstan! to move. Since we didn't bring any food with us and there's not much here, I mean, but they still made some effort. So we got like a really simple lunch, but I'm happy that's in another yurt. Look, it's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna go f eat this and then we start heading back. But there's one more thing to do before we actually get back to Karakul. This is the surprise of Alten Arashan, the hot springs. The most beautiful day of my Kyrgyzstan trip came to an end. And we are heading back to Karakol. Another experience not to miss in Kyrgyzstan is archery. It's called Jia and while the European tradition of archery actually comes from wars, theirs mainly comes from hunting and horseback hunting. So it's a little different but you know obviously it remains the same so things have evolved. It used to be horns and intestines but now it's wood and string and these are obviously the same but it's completely different. I'm obviously really rubbish at it. It only took seven attempts to finally hit the board. <laughs> you will see, but it's quite a fun experience and you get to see, you know, how, how different it is. It's actually quite interesting how much you have to pull. Like it takes a lot of effort to actually pull it a little bit further. Another experience not to miss in Kyrgyzstan. Definitely recommend it and usually comes with eagle hunting. So you don't really need to book it separately. Yes. Yay! Did the first one actually hit the board? I am with the Eagle, her name is Soleka and this is one of the experiences I've been dreaming of for quite some time. I'd never seen an Eagle this close to me and they are just magnificent, they're really beautiful and they kept like you know their babies, they train them, they feed them so much every day and they keep them for about 20 years and then they're sort of let go freely in there. I didn't know that the Eagles actually live up to 60-70 years so beautiful and so scary at the same time if you want to book this you'll have to work with someone who's a certified um, eagle man because you could go with someone who's amateur but they don't really take care of eagles so i would definitely recommend booking like a proper experience so um, if you want to do this they will show you how they hunt and train them how to hunt and also how they just call them and apparently they can come as far as five kilometers away 
which is crazy but they're beautiful and so massive and magnificent. I'm amazed and scared at the same time. Welcome to Kyrgyzstan. After some fun with archery and meeting that beautiful eagle Soleka in the Mars Canyon, let's head back to Kajisai where I'm staying and it's time to explore some beaches on Isako Lake. I know you don't have Kyrgyzstan as a sort of place where you could go to the beach, especially being landlocked, but there's always ways around it. I am at Isako Lake. I am in love with this place. The beach is absolutely beautiful, clean water, and this is a salinated lake. So it never freezes even in winter, which is really surprising considering there's 118 rivers and streams, fresh water that empty into this beautiful lake. Crazy, isn't it? But the water is really clear, clean, and you can definitely swim in here. And you can, if you want like a good experience of the beach, you need to come outside the city. So I would recommend you stay in Karakol for a couple of days and then you move like a couple of days to a beach town like Kajisai, where I am at. And you get this beautiful experience, especially with these gorgeous red rugged mountains behind. If you want more of a party beach, you need to go to Cholponata or anywhere on the northern shore. But if you like quiet, peaceful beaches like me, come to Kajisai. Next time, I am heading to Songko Lake and on the way, I will make a few stops. So stay tuned. This is Brown Boy Travels and let me know what you think of the video. Do hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for your own countries so I can visit, do let me know as well. You can also check me on Instagram and TikTok. I will see you in the next video. Bye.